YouTube and oh! YouTube without my beautiful co-host, Casey Carter and Desirable Bottom. Hello, ladies. Oh! Hey, ladies. Oh, we're back. It's only been almost a month. It feels and like that. It Desiree's in the USA. Like you got to play a song. Jay, hello? <laughs> That's you know, that like, you know what? Every time that we introduce Desiree from now on, that's that's the sound that that's we should play. Do it. Yeah, like I feel like it's just like the walk-on music. Like here, here, here comes Desiree. Yeah. Right. Wait, let's, let's okay. Wait, hold on. Let's tr let's try it one more time. You ready, Desiree? Here you go. Okay. should have our theme music also casey what would you you know why it not everybody gets a trophy carrie jesus christ here we go keep moving <laughs> okay wait a minute the the theme or the canadian what, what, what? song wait hold on sorry we got we got a slight misfunction there we go it sounds like when you win mario kart or mario brothers super mario brothers that's what that song sounds like it's like at the end you know how it's like dun, dun, dun. Casey, what would your theme yeah. song be if you could have one? If, it's all if about you and the I Benjamins, could have theme baby. Song. It's all about the oh. Benjamins, baby. Oh, That's a good it's one. all about the Benjamins, baby. That or Megan Thee Stallion's Savage, because that's what plays when my alarm goes off every morning. Mm -hmm. Mine would be Nicki Minaj, Anita F R E A K. Okay. I don't know why I like that song so much. But speaking of music, we have to give a moment of silence to the recently announced deceased Julio, age 59. So sad. I didn't even know. That's For real. Sad. Breaking news. We just found out. As I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I take a look at my life and realize it's not enough. Because I've been passing and laughing so long. No. By the way, also a Exotica stage performer. Yes, remember. Coolio, also, Coolio kicked it backstage at Exotica. RIP Coolio. I've been this close to him. Okay, not really that close. This, but this like, close? Yeah, like, that close. Like, like, I went to Pensacola with a girlfriend of mine, and you know, there's really nothing to do. If you've ever been to Pensacola, it's like Navy City. Military. And it's yeah, yeah it's, it's dead. That's what you do when you go to Pensacola. Right. You find you a husband, but um, that's not why I was there. <laughs> I was there to see a military person, but once that was over. Didn't turn out we to be like, a husband. No, definitely not. Um, so we were like, what the fuck do you do here? And it turned out to be the Bushwhacker Festival, which is like a big thing there. And they so like a story. masturbation thing? I wish, but it should so, be. Uh, that's bush cutting kind thing. of uh, like yeah. pubic hair thing? And that's a drink, and it's a, a really drink, good. Pubic hair in your drink? <laughs> that's that's, gross. Dis that's disgusting. That would probably sound exotic. It's like though, my but... least favorite kind of hair to have in my drink. Yeah, in anything but... for that matter, in anything. Yeah, you, you I'm at the bar. Drink, What's up, beautiful me? ladies? Hope you're having an awesome night. And Jay, hope you're having me too. So, <laughs> I'm like sitting Jason, call you a lady. You. Yes. And Jay. But I was at the bar, and I'm like, damn. I love, they kept playing Coolio songs. And then I realized literally as I looked past the bartender on the other side of the bartender was a stage and who's on the stage singing Coolio songs, but Coolio. And I'm like, well, that would explain all the Coolio music. <laughs> oh, we, were definitely, we were definitely, so yeah, there was that. And the queen passed away. Whatever, True. moving on next. Yeah. Who fucking cares? Queen Seriously. Queen passed away. Who fucking cares? Like, does 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 anybody really care? Raise your hand if you care that the queen died. No, get out of here, Desiree. <laughs> Jesus, just because you come to America, you want to start <laughs> stepping the line. I get it. I don't. I just mentioned it since you know, know. mentioning. It. I no, I I only say that because 
I tried to like sit down and relax at four. Well, we were at four twenty this weekend, and or last weekend, two weekends ago. I don't know. It's all blended. I'm really fucking still yeah, high. Um, it's all- and and I sat down for like an hour to like do some work and turn on the TV. And the only thing on every goddamn channel was Everything. like a dead Queen. body being pulled up a street by like a car or a horse or a dog or whatever it was. But like, <laughs> it, you know, who, who cares? I, I, like literally that shit is I just, you know what really like, grinds my gears? No, I'm just I, kidding. I, I, <laughs> why I don't have regular TV because that did not happen when I turned on my TV. Uh-huh. Like, I'm sorry, random it's like claps. The same thing when you know the president does a speech and they put it on every fucking station. Okay, but that's yeah. our president, but, right? Well, but it still, depends. It de- like, are we talking like well, 2016 saying, to 2020, I'm, or are we talking 2020 no, to 22? The United States of America's president versus England's queen. Right. I, I give it a pass because it's technically. I, you know, I, I get it for the history. Right? Like, that's the thing. Like, the history is very interesting, whatever. It's also why, like, we worry about, like, having, like, some, like, bullshit Robert E. Lee, you know, thing down in the yeah. South. And, like, needing to knock that down. Let's let's talk about the fucking Queen of England. Let's talk about, like, England in general and the lands that they rule still to this day that they, like, pillaged and, you know, plundered. And yet here we are celebrating them while they ride through on their fucking dog drawn carriage or whatever the fuck it is, you know? <laughs> fuck that shit. Yeah, no. It's, drawn carriage. Yeah, it's woof. You know? No, Alex, your eyes do not deceive you. Boop tube is back. And we are so happy that you guys came back. Woo woo Christopher, <laughs> Whitney, Jason, Alex, of course. Yo, Jason got his VIP ticket to Exotica. Woo-hoo. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Yes, so, yeah. there he Speaking is. Speaking of Jason, Jason's happy that my house didn't burn down. He also so did not get hit by a bus today. Yeah, Woo-hoo! he didn't get hit by a bus, Jason. Yeah. Yeah. Nice job. Nice job. The other day, this is just a moment. Let's take a moment of silence for gratitude. Um, at 3.30 in the morning, there are like four fire trucks in front of my house and a knock at my door. And it's a fireman saying, you need to know that you're the property next to you, which is connected. As you know, much like Philly and other cities, you know, there's row houses and, you know, townhouses and it's like all one building. So the property next to me is abandoned and they knock on the door and they're like, just to let you know, it's on fire. <laughs> so put your clothes on, you know, get your valuables, like, you know, important documents, whatever, and be prepared at any moment. We may have to tell you, you need to evacuate. It's not necessary now, but could happen. So I'm like on alert. It's 3.30, you know what I mean? Middle of the morning. And uh, luckily, they were able to extinguish the fire. They, you know, put it out. It's all good. But come to find out, there are 15 homeless people living in the abandoned property next to me. And they got high. They started a fire inside of a tire. And the tire caught fire. It's weird because usually all the fires that I've ever started inside of a tire, like, say, rubber, (laughs) like, I would never expect to burn. It's, um... Burning rubber? (laughs) No, definitely. But... The point of telling you that story is that- Oh, sorry. Wait, hold on. Sorry. Jesus Christ. All the sound effects are going crazy tonight. Yeah, your fingers are off. They the miss chain. us. Yeah, no, I'm like... Yes, he's like... It's trigger finger. Yeah, so luckily my house was not affected, um, but I was definitely... Put into a state of gratitude. Yes. I was put into a state of gratitude to appreciate the things that I do have because literally at 3.30 in the morning, I could have lost everything. Everything. Everything I own. Yeah, everything. So I was very grateful. And I had to post something on Instagram. I'm normally not, you know, it's not about attention. It was about letting people know, like, you should just be grateful for what you have. Because in an instant, in a blink of an eye, you can literally lose everything. So thank goodness everything's okay. I did make sure my renter's insurance was paid. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Lorenzo, I hate you. I can't believe you break this kind of news to me like this. Motherfucker. All right, there we go. Aaron Judge hits home run 61. If, Lorenzo, awesome. if you're fucking Ooh. with us. No, listen, we've been on watch for this. 
I've been watching every Yankees game for six, seven nights in a row just because yeah, I'm waiting for this dude to hit this thing. And yeah. it was um, the time that I don't watch the game. Motherfucker. Yeah, that like, I, I'm, I will be finding that video. Listen, I, I'm, I'm on the hunt now. Because it'll be on YouTube as soon as we get off. I'm By the way, down. mark my words. Next week, we're going to be talking, right? And I'm gonna, he is going to hit three or four more in like the next two games just because he now has it out of his system and he's going right. to crush the ball. So now he can relax. Yeah. So it's, yeah. it is. And at this point, people don't have to try to strike him out or throw balls because <laughs> well, he's already right. done it. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. <laughs> He's already done it. So My no wife is going to talk so him. much shit when I get home about how Yay. like we've watched every game and then I come to boob tube and, you know. Here it is. And you, and boob and you ruin it you for know, you. It's all, it's all, <laughs> you boob tube girls, you're bad, you're bad, uh, you're bad examples, I'll tell you. So we could jump into boob tube, but I think it's more important that we talk about the 420 Expo. Oh, God, <laughs> yes. <laughs> The 420 Expo. Casey, you know what? what was your experience? How about oh, how ahead. about I play this video first? Let, let, yes, let's yes, just give video. you let, let's play give you the, the video overview, right? Of like what yep. this kind yes. of thing was, and then we'll we'll come back and we'll talk about. It. <laughs> Fucking ribbon didn't cut. <laughs> anywhere but the food trucks anywhere the fucking food was phenomenal let me like, tell you i i have to I, let, this shit blew away what we ever thought it was going to be and and you know obviously all of our jobs here right as, as we you know exotica affords us the ability to be able to do what we do with this with 420 you know it's all about kind of hyping it up and getting it going but, you know, once it's through, I can share my observations with this. And that it, that main observation was five weeks out from this show, we were scared out of our fucking lives <laughs> because we knew what it could be. And we had all these different parts moving and things were going. But you you never know what's going to fall through and what's not. And like you, it just all needs to come through together in the end. And we realized probably a week and a half out from the show that the ticket sales were doing things that we had never seen tickets do in the Jersey Expo Center. And that's counting Exotica, counting last year's Exotica. And we watched this thing fucking take off like a rocket over a week and a half, two weeks before the show. To the point that like when you walked in and, and we were talking about it pre-show, it's the only word to describe it was the vibe. Like the, the fucking, the, I love Exotica. I, I was, I, I was born into Exotica. I started that shit when I was 26. Like I had been a part of me, but 420 felt like home, you know, like it was like, Everybody you walked said in that. my, Everybody. my, my yeah. best, 84. some of my best friends, you know, we had all kinds of friends like kid pitch in and like work and do all kinds of stuff. And just, it was, you know, it was like some grassroots fucking weed smoking shit, you know? And, uh, my buddy Dan, who we go to fish shows all the time and, you know, are out and go to a ton of music shows, worked our front door scanning tickets. And he decided to bring up his boom box and he was like playing music as people were walking through. And he's playing the disco biscuits and like shit that like you don't hear at Exotica. <laughs> you know, like I had a speaker right. that piped out of my my I have a little private office off the show floor. And I had the speaker outside onto the show floor that I could control with my own phone. And so, like, I played everything I wanted to play for three fucking days. Like, I was like, 
let's put on fish. Okay, here we go. Let's put on good, you know, and the, you know, the show floor ended up packing out. The people yeah. ended up showing up, but the, the, the ass, the killer was the smoking section. That shit blew the doors off of ev- like, nobody's ever seen something like that. We ended up taking this entire outdoor space, fencing it all in, putting park benches and wrapped with food trucks and this huge tent and a VIP like smoking session area. And I, people were doing dabs, sitting at tables. We had dab rigs set up and like, you know, I mean, food literally going to like, like I said, I, I at one point on Friday was smoking a joint because, you know, I like to think my job is done by that point. But I'm smoking a joint, talking to four Edison police officers and eating from the food truck called My Sister's Balls. So, like, I mean, it really was. That was your mouth for the ball. It, 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 dude, by the way, that place, it was fucking awesome, man. Those, the, 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 the balls were fantastic. From the, the one, the cat, I don't remember what it was uh, called, the, there cat, was, uh, the, the fresh weed lemonade. Yep. Um, cat-like reflexes. Cat-like reflexes, that's it. The lemonade, we spent, they were $10 for a large. And I'm going to tell you, I think I spent $100 on lemonade and had a, a diabetic comatose. Like, I was... That lemonade was so fucking good. Yeah. I know I spent at least, I, I couldn't even tell you, I spent a lot of money at that food truck, at the food truck. Section. Dude, the, I, I th- the crazy thing was, <laughs> it, you know, whenever you put as many people through the convention center as we did that weekend, there's always going to be somebody that has a bad time. You're, you're going to have a group of people that are like, hey, listen, you know, chick got fucked up and I'm not happy about it. And it is what it is. This show, we had three complaints. We had 17,000 people through the show. And there were three complaints about people that, you know, I mean, again, everybody steps in shit once, you know, every once in a while. Like, and that the person. The complaint that I heard was not being able to buy cannabis or any THC yep, products. Of course. And by the way, was there any shortage and I was of weed? Like, where else, Care, where else was there any shortage of weed? People. Did you nope, find any, at, at any point, did no. you think, man, I wish I had more weed? No. In fact, <laughs> I had to give away my gummies because Ugh. I was so high. We and I clearly, wait, clearly you were high if you gave away your gummies. Uh, I I exactly. I am I forty-four scared. years old. I've been doing this for seventeen years. This year, I bought a quarter pound of cannabis as a business expense. Thank you very much. Yes. Hey. It, or, sorry, a, a quarter pound, not a quarter ounce. We now, got four four think, ounces. Yes. I mean, now we, we, the New Jersey Expo just needs to be a fairground it, and open up for more outdoor space, and it is game over. <sighs> so now the, the problem is the parking and all kinds of other stuff. Plus, you know, the nice thing was I was really concerned that everybody would go outside and never come back in. And <laughs> honestly, wow. on Saturday, I walked out, and there were a 1,000 people probably, you know, eating at the food trucks and doing their thing. Mm-hmm smoking weed and um i'm like i walk back inside i'm like fuck like i feel bad because inside's probably dead whatever i walk in there was 30 people at every booth it was jamming like the stage was a different vibe we had live we had live bands we had how how amazing were the bands that were up on stage and like did you guys catch any of them we had yes we actually had like some some performances that really just like We've never done, and now we're going to start doing with Exotica and stuff too. So, it was it was really cool. It was it was again as a guy that's done this shit for seventeen years, you know, and my business partner has done it for 30, 25, 30. You know, he told me on Monday after the show, he was like, "This was the coolest trade show I've been to in twenty years." It was my favorite. It was such a fucking vibe. That shit was amazing. So thank you guys. It it, it was awesome to you know, Carrie and Casey Thanks to have you guys us. there and and Desiree. Now that we know that you can effectively get over the border. Um, <laughs> so what's right. the deal? Do you do you I have to go listen, back? I think minute. you just Desiree. Wait a minute. No, wait. Yeah, I, I was gonna to... say October twenty. What's the show? First through the twenty third. So like, mm-hmm. I mean, that's not that long, Desiree. As long as you have, as long as you have an internet connection and a PlayStation or an Xbox, I feel like you can make it happen. As long as I have my laptop. See, there you go. 
Well, then I'll see you in a few days. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm coming to get you. Send me the address. Uh, Drop, so me, a I Drop me a pin. Drop me a pin. I feel, yeah. I feel bamboozled because I feel like she could have gotten here all this time and she's been faking the funk. <sighs> she did. Because she yeah. made it. And didn't even say anything. You know like what? She snuck so, in. So here Actually, is, she did at some point say she was going to be here. I, I heard that she was going to be know. here. There was a little like grumbling, but I also have I have an alternate uh, uh, explanation. Source. I think that Desiree <laughs> has a twin <laughs> in Canada. I wish I had a sound effect that went dun dun dun, but I don't. <laughs> it was. Or you know. she never <laughs> lived in Canada. She's Ooh. not even really Canadian. Oh man. She's been in you Virginia just, the whole time. You just blew my mind. That is um let's see, how's that? <laughs> no, no, that doesn't do it. Um no, no, not that. I like yours better. better. I like the twin thing. Okay. I think that's cool. Twinning. Yes. Desiree has a twin in in Canada. Oh Desiree. Oh Desiree. And, you know, this is what it is. She had herself cloned. <laughs> So that one of her personnel or one of her clones can be gaming while the other one's on boob tube. Seriously. Hey. That's, you know. If I could clone myself, my clone would be on cam 24 hours a day, seven, seven days a week. Yeah, I think we're going to get into some like, I think we're going to get into some <laughs> sticky questions there. I, I don't know as if you could force your clone to do anything. I, I see I see Casey game. over there like giving you the evil eye. She's like, oh girl, yeah. we're not doing this again. This, I, I am spaced get... out. I don't know what you're talking about. I she had ate, she ate the gummies. Of gummies she so. ate the gummies. I want I wanted to get one of those. I don't know if you guys remember that. Well, I don't know if it's still around, but there's this like 3D cartoon that gets on Chatterbait. And when it first came out, it was a huge dilemma. She ate the gummies. Huge controversy. Everyone's like, oh, it's not. You don't know if that's a man or a woman or if they're of age. Blah blah blah. But anyways. I want one of those. If it wasn't so expensive to try to get a 3D animation that interacts, like when people, you can talk, you do the voice, but the animation does all the work. Oh, a VTuber. Yeah. I can't remember the yeah. name, but Listen, yeah. Carrie, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to introduce you to this girl I know. Her name is Desiree. She's, she's got all the information. She could pass it along to you. It is. Sure. It's a VTuber. Keep, keep see, there you go. VTuber. Boom, done. I can be Google a wife it. too. Or a husband. Yeah. Yes, do it. Speaking of boob tube, I think we should talk about some things that we've watched in the course of the last three weeks. Fucking thing sucks. Yes. Sucks. <laughs> Casey, how about you lead yep. us into this this cell this uh uh blah, 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 Okay. We just did this nice. segment. Go mm -hmm. ahead. All right. So Casey's I'm too gonna, high to talk now. I'm gonna <laughs> jump right in with House of the Dragon. Um, literally before uh, 420, my two episodes of um, Casey at Night were about House of the Dragon. I'm I'm gonna just say it here. I am obsessed. I am obsessed to the point where I have a virtual dragon whose name is. Does Fire she do Angel. website instructions? No, it's an app. <laughs> and yeah, an and app. Fire Angel was at 420. Let me just show you. Fire Angel was at 420. This is this is Fire Angel with Lorenzo. Ooh. Ah! As Fire Angel with Lorenzo, and um, I had Fire Angel over at my neighbors on the on their stuff. So, yeah, mildly obsessed with House of the Dragon, and let me tell you, it is fucking amazing. Do you feel First like it's stacking all, up to be what you wanted it to be? Yes, and that's let me tell good you because what more. happened? What are you going to do when the ending falls apart and you hate nope. everything about it? Nope. No, and, and I'm going to tell you why I'm already good. I'm okay. already good. First of all, they came out the gate swinging, swinging hard. Like in the very first scene, or one of the very first scenes, you see a girl riding a dragon who looks just like the chick you last saw riding a dragon. So immediately you're like, yes, I'm sold. 
okay? From there, it's just a ton of other things that happen. But what really does it for me is the Lord of the Rings came out a week later and it sucks ass. It literally puts you to sleep by comparison. And I so I'm, I'm sure there are plenty of folks who are um, watching House of the Dragon every freaking week. I'm just like glued, like, ooh, what's happening? What's going to happen? It is all of that. I, I've, I've no watched House of I Dragons can... and I've watched the Lord of the Rings one and mm -hmm. it just, it doesn't compare. Doesn't compare. Yeah. Nope. At all. Nope. Mm -mm. At all. I, I, I pick up my phone and stop paying attention to the Lord of the Ring ones. Link, Lord of the Ring ones. Oh. It's just kind of like, you know, whatever. Yeah. I don't know. But, but. So one of the uh, one of my other favorite scenes um, from House of the Dragon was in uh, I think it was episode episode three where the um, the, the 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 daughter uh, Rhaenyra Rhaenyris Rhaenyra I can't remember which one it is Rhaenyra well where she had gone out to a sex club with her uncle and her uncle kissed Damon. her but then he left her hanging. And no, she, she back, yeah, well, she wanted more, but he was like, eh, not trying to like hit that shit. And yeah, basically because he's running game against his brother. So he's using the daughter to piss the brother True. off. But she then goes back, sneaks back into the castle and gets it on with her uh, guard who's supposed to be celibate. Nice. And rumor has it, she fucked the uncle, but... My favorite part of the whole episode so slutty, but no titties. Very... I mean, what happens there? Like <laughs> the very end of the episode, the Meister comes in and slips her the Westeros version of a Plan B in this T that's supposed to take care of whatever might have happened if something had happened. I loved it. Loved it. I just I never Move disappointed. Back. Yeah, there's and always he... something in the episode that like. Just has me going. No, they didn't. I just, it's, I'm not disappointed. He's pulling strings. He is literally because he goes and tells the queen, "Oh, she may not have fucked Damon, but she definitely was fucking." So somebody, it was, yeah. <laughs> well, I I love that. There's like all these all of these elements that really tie in to like, and knowing that we know what happens because you know Game of Thrones. But in the in the midst of seeing how it all unfolds and how she's going to have to fight for her place in the kingdom and the queen and her fight to protect her son, like it's just insanity. And then how about the dad? Have you seen the new one? Yeah. Well, well that just so came out this weekend? yeah, I was going to really it was the first what five episodes, five episodes. and then it jumped uh, to the six yeah. where it jumped yeah. like years yeah. right ahead. So yeah. So we're at right now we are approximately 14 or 15 years ahead. So between right. 5 and from six, where it started, we went right. Up Can you Yeah, so it, between 5 and 6 we jumped 10 years. Do you guys watch the after the show episodes yeah! where they talk about it? Yeah. So it was really interesting and I never really thought about it like but when they were talking about like okay, season, you know, episode 6, season 1, we are recasting basically a third of the show or, or a half of the show. Mm -hmm. And yep. it's the really, it's kind of unfortunate because I really grew to like the young girl yep. that was playing. Like she had a very Renera. weird looking face and like, kind of like she was but different her, looking. And I feel she like, like her, Lacey. The, the she definitely gave she me more played, of a Lacey vibe. The way she plays the character is so perfect. Absolutely perfect. Yes. yes. The real question and I've been asking this since we started reviewing the show. What see, what actual episode do you think that she will finally get naked in? It took like yeah. one episode. She was naked. For Game of Thrones. Eh, did you see any, were there boobies? Jay. Was there any vagina? Listen, what, listen what, 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 I mean, like, who, who when she fucked the guard. The Ted wants to know. Renero. Oh. No, Jay, it wasn't Game okay. of Thrones. I'm, I'm not going to lie. I, I kind of want to know, too. Um, we know you do, Jay. But, so I'm thinking now that they've jumped up and, you know, she's older and she's like, you know, that's where she's going to let it fly. So TBD. Maybe. 
Yeah. I mean, she's. Ha- it's obviously the biggest talking point pregnant. of the show. She's got like yeah. five, six kids by now. Like, hello. No. She's sure. fucking the guy. She's, maybe you don't want to see that shit. I don't know. It's no, you know. <laughs> what is she? I think she has three kids now. Um, I know the queen yeah, has got- three kids. I know the well, queen has they- three kids, and I believe in that episode she's delivering what I think is her third child. By the way, don't don't forget that the first season of Game of Thrones left you with a hanger that like nobody's ever seen before. And so, you know, if these guys are willing to jump an entire generation, you know, or like not generation, no, <laughs> a, a decade ahead or eight years ahead, whatever, don't be afraid okay. that they're not completely able to just kill off the person that you care about the most. Yeah, well, it is fascinating to me because like you said, in the after the episode, um, you know, conversation, they clearly define the next five episodes as being like a whole new season because it's a, almost a whole new cast. So, yeah, it wouldn't surprise me. Can you imagine? I mean, like, you know, crazy. as somebody who like, you know, builds on like the team that you have and like, you know, what you're doing and whatever. Imagine doing that for five shows and then being like, all right, cool. Nice to see you. Good to meet you. Now, I'm going to find the person that's going to replace you. Here we go. Right. Let's go. It's got to right. be a kind of a mind fuck. Yeah. Yeah. But the unless... cool thing is, is... Go ahead. No, I was just going to say, unless come season two, we start going back and forth and around and around. And they, you know, she's still around or they're still around for episodes in season two. Yeah. What I do like is that they have like the villain when it, when it first started you saw that the queen um the queen's father was the one that was even though he wasn't evil but he was kind of the bad guy because he was pulling strings and trying to get his daughter into the throne and He's wanted conniving. to have a son <laughs> yeah he was, he was very conniving sure. manipulating yeah but now that's changed he's been dismissed from the the kingdom and now they're the meister is in here pulling strings by feeding certain things to the queen and now he's got her by the nuts, well, by the badge, because you know he knows her secrets. He know, you know what I mean? Like he's no, he's like, it's not the know. it's not the Meister. It's actually the son of the new hand who kills his own father and brother. Yeah, yeah, that's what I meant. On behalf the, the, the son. of, on behalf of the queen, who after he admits to the fact that he made this arrangement, she's like. <gasps> Oh my God, I can't believe you did that. And he's like, bitch, please. You practically asked for it. And yeah, he's that like, was if I killed them, I'm strict, definitely not afraid to kill you, bitch. <laughs> like... Totally, totally <laughs> cold blooded. Cold yeah. blooded. And see, Agreed. but but what the what makes it what he did so brilliant is the fact that it's his father and his brother that he killed. He killed Rhaenyra's yeah. children's father. He killed the, the, the gentleman who is the current hand to the king, all because she said, I wished my father was the hand because he would have defended me. Well, lo and behold, guess who's back? Mm. So yeah, dude is, he's definitely tricky. And they liken him unto the little sneaky dude who was running the, uh, you know, running the girls in Game the, of the Thrones. Dwarf. He, not the dwarf, not the, the little dwarf, finger. the dude, no, not him. The, yes, yes. The dude who was running the girls, like they, they compare him to him because he's very manipulative, very smooth, very cunning. And, you know, you're busy telling him all your business because he fed you a little sweetness. And now you tell him everything and he uses that against you to create his own opportunities. I mean, because come on, again, he killed his father and his brother without hesitation for this chick who he hardly knows, but he's been manipulating her since she was young, Mm. you know, so it's, oh, yeah, it's a thing. But he has a motive. He has an ulterior motive. There's always a motive. He's bringing the dad in because now the queen owes him a favor. And what is he going to want when the king dies? He's going to want to marry the queen. So now he's in a place of power. Boom. 
Yeah, but if if the sons are put into that position, because understand if the king dies right now, Rhaenyra is in, in line to be to be queen. If the but if she left. they yes, so if the king now puts the son in position, the son is in line to be queen. It doesn't matter who his mama marries. It's the son before the queen anyway. So mm-hmm. and and in order for this dude to get anything oh, yeah, out of her, he is old enough. I forgot we jumped. Even if, but remember, even if he wasn't in Game of Thrones, they had the youngest of the queen's sons ended up on the throne, oh, yeah. and she just sat beside him as his hand. So the age is nothing. Because oh, wow. remember, before we jumped ten years, they wanted Rhaenyra to marry, um, to marry her own brother, who at the time was two years old. So they do some yeah. shit. They listen. When yeah. I, I'm. I am not exaggerating when I tell you I got this shit down. I got this shit down. And they do <laughs> some stuff. So I'm dying to see where this is going to conclude, um, you know, come the next four episodes. But it is amazing. Absolutely amazing. What about the wedding? The wedding of Rhaenyra and um, I can't remember his name, but his boyfriend gets beaten to death. Beaten to death. Right. Yep. by the guard yes. yep. at yep. the wedding. Yep. Well, he yes. shouldn't have ran his that mouth. That was crazy. Okay? He shouldn't have ran his mouth. He Absolutely. should have kept his mouth shut because <laughs> the arrangement was already made. You didn't need to go over there and say shit to that man. So you deserve True. to ask. But the guard had already told the queen. Right. Um, I was upset about that. He should have kept his fucking mouth shut. Yeah. Well, sure. because he felt I'm bad. Gonna, I'm gonna. He felt, I'm, he felt I'm, bad. I'm gonna go out on a limb here. Ready? The yeah, show ain't yeah. gonna be shit compared to Game of Thrones. It just isn't gonna. It's not gonna <laughs> stack up. It's not gonna be what you want it to be. We all wish it, it was. But at I the end of the will. day, the the storyline that's being told is like you can already tell far less than what like the original game of thrones was now in hindsight we all want it we want it to work but at the end of the day i think that this thing is going to be like but you know know what i think okay so let's just say for a hot second that you're right jay i think the reason you could be right is only because game of thrones was so brand spanking new we had never really seen anything like that we've seen a lot of things like that but not like that so the House of the Dragon will never be what Game of Thrones was and is. Yes, However, in terms of a follow-up, this shit is fire. Yes. Now, what I do believe may be suspect is Snow. I'm not buying that one. Not buying really? that one at See, all. Really? See, I haven't seen any details on Snow yet, but I kind of like, that's the kind of thing I look forward to, I think, more than the storyline that they have now. Okay. Well, okay. we shall see. No. We shall see. You know, yeah. We shall see. Yeah. You guys hear it here, folks. Jay says it ain't gonna be shit compared to Throne Game of Thrones, but we shall Case, see. Casey, but, Casey's the optimistic one here. I like I you know I'm, optimistic. I'm all about the awkward optimism. Like optimism. I'm cool with it. Oh wait, wrong way. Yeah. High five. Oh wait. <laughs> there you go. Here. High five. Oh yeah, <laughs> nice job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> But wait, before if we you go guys further, sat in the same spot every week, you could actually figure out how to high five each other without even needing to worry about I don't ever, I can never get this right. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like all of you guys yeah, are in different wait. places this week. Right? What do you mean? Kate, I, I mean, Case, like, you, you look. This, my, this is my safe spot. Are. But you don't have the same You're backdrop high. or whatever? You sparked up. You're no, high. that's that's what it was the last time I was here. <laughs> no, nah, get out of here. No, yeah, it is. Yeah, okay. You're always um, in the same spot. It's actually the Chrysler building. But okay. Yeah. That's my same oh, spot. Oh, you mean our, our backgrounds? Yeah, the what's behind you. You're you're different, Kara. Yeah, no. No, is, I moved, obviously, I you know I moved, if, this is my new situation. I haven't, I haven't. Which changed it. what? Like maybe you've done it once. What since since we since I moved? I moved in June. Okay, I don't know. I feel I'm trying to cover here. No, it's the weed. Please, it's please. the weed. <laughs> Yo, I smoked so much weed at 4:20. You have no idea. Like I literally. I bet you were probably high. I'm from 4:20 on Monday and Tuesday. Well, we came He's back so with high. a lot of weed too. I mean, that might have been uh, the problem. Um, but yeah. we got to get you know right back into into to Exotica, New Jersey. So I'm still smoking but weed. But speaking um, of 4:20, yeah. 
you got to show the pictures oh. that we got from the ugly portrait no. guy. So his name was Really Bad Portraits. And I will give Dan really Davis Dan Davis from our team all the credit because this dude one night all stoned was watching the news because we're middle-aged men and uh, saw this like feature story on this dude called Really Bad Portraits. And this dude oh, literally, wow. all he does, he takes a Sharpie and an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper. And honestly, seeing him at the show, care, he, he has this great presentation where he holds it out and he draws it so that you can actually like see the people around you can see it. And as right. you stand there, he'll draw your portrait in what? 30 seconds, 45 I- 45 yeah. seconds, yeah, like a, minute. a minute or two. I mean, it was like, yeah. you know, wow. maybe two minutes if it like really took him a time. And uh, the cool thing about it was as the dude stood there and drew it, the crowd got to watch him draw it. Mm-hmm. And you stood there and watched the crowd watch him draw it. So you can't right. see it, oh. right? As you're, as he's like drawing it on a clipboard. And that was the amazing thing of it. Like the presentation of it was just wild and and, and it wrote, was five bucks his sign, his sign was on a cardboard box well like, that's mm-hmm. but the beauty of it I is is like his whole brilliant. brand was like i can do yeah. this with eight and a half by 11 pieces of printer paper and black yeah. sharpie markers some packing <laughs> tape like boxes here we go and the dude but it was an experience so but but the amazing okay so i do have to show you right so care you here's here's carrie getting i mean really gotta give credit to casey uh, casey filmed this for me a a great goddamn (laughs) photo right um yeah and then let's see my wait wait, god i don't even want to show this here you go here's (laughs) this is me yes this is that should be the new exotic. By the way, it's my Facebook profile. Like that is like, <laughs> no I mean, I, I might, it might be my Facebook profile for the rest of my life. Like I, oh I feel like this encapsulates everything that I try to be and whatever. Let me, I, I do have to, because he was, you know, kind of instrumental in the process of like doing all this stuff. Wait, look, like, give me one oh. second here. Here's Dan. This is this was actually Dan and I got a duo drawing, and we, oh, so you know, we funny. we both stood there. Dan, you know, like I mean, he's not that Asian in real life. Um, <laughs> he also, I just want to go on record by saying that our necks are not the same size; <laughs> they are totally different. Uh, but other than that, you know, I mean, it's might have a little less hair than Dan has now, but that's just giving him a little bit, you know, like that's some low hanging fruit. So um, oh, there you go. That That's but those that's guys. He, he was awesome. And by the way, yeah. Retired on Monday. Crazy. Aww. Like this dude that's who bad. he just, but the Monday mm-hmm. after the show retired, he's done. So if you got your drawing from really bad, really bad portrait guy in New York, and you like me had it on the cork board right below the dartboard in the office. You should take it off that cork board and put it away somewhere in case he's going into filmmaking. And by the way, that guy is so fucking genius that he's going to be, he's going to do amazing things. I'm telling you right now, I, I somebody will that. look back on this in, you know, in the future, that dude, $5 fucking printer paper drawings of like that any of us could do. I mean, he, right was just really fucking good at it a testament Uh to if you think you're overthinking it you are yeah no basic ass shit can still be an experience for people that are looking for an experience yep that dude said that was that message that i got five dollars a drawing and he did one every easily five minutes probably like three minutes Mm -hmm. He was always busy and he was busy the whole time. And the dude probably made $70 an hour and, you know, just printed money from pieces of paper. He got it staples, <laughs> you know I mean? Like yeah. that, that's my favorite kind of guy. That guy made fucking lemonade out of lemons. Yeah. That, like, dude, that, that shit's crazy. Um, yeah. Yeah. I was also very, very line. high at exotica or at, at 420. <laughs> so like, I might have been more entertained than I should have been. I don't know. You, you just never. Nah, it was good. It was, it was fun. Good. It was fun. 
even Casey, who was holding my camera for me, was like kick, getting a kick out of it. She was over there giggling and stuff like. <laughs> well, I mean, because I have been watching him the whole weekend. Wait. He was he was so, right across the way from me, so I got to watch everybody get their Casey, pictures. Casey, some I, of them were good, some of them were awful. I want to I want to ask you a question, and it's going to be funny because the uh, comments are going to lag a little bit. But I want to talk to you about Lorenzo at the 420 Expo. Okay. Yes. Okay. Can we talk about that? Yes. So Go for it. think about like this dude. I mean, so first of all, I don't even need to tell you tell me what is Lorenzo's like, what, what's his like take on consumer public cannabis use? So he has 35 years in law enforcement, right? So, right. you know, just it has been conditioned in a way like that's yes. That's the thing. Yeah. It's it's illegal as far as his brain is concerned. The 420 no, I, Expo, I, Jersey's wait, first consumer cannabis. Don't listen to that. Sorry. So I can't think of who asked the question, but someone asked what were our feelings about about cannabis and everything. And I started to say something and was like, well, you talk because I wanted to hear him talk law enforcement. And he says, well, yeah, you know, I remember when your fingertips were this and we used to do that. And I was like looking at him like, what? what? <laughs> this is the person who barely drinks alcohol. And he's talking about how he was smoking and selling and he had machines and this, that, and the other. And I'm like, you had rolling machines? What the, who is this version of Lorenzo? So me, it sir. was interesting. It was very interesting. And I bought gummies from the chicks next to me. All of this, you know, gummies and chocolate and all kinds of stuff. And he was like, well, how much did they tell you to take? I said, well, they said take a half. He's like, well, take the half. Go ahead, take the half. Let me see. I'm like, okay. <laughs> dude, uh, I want to party with Lorenzo. Holy fuck. Like, yeah, I was, I, yeah. and even now when he talks about the rolling machines and the, the fingertips that are yellowing and, and everything, I'm just like, I don't know who that person is. I'm so accustomed to, twin. to you know, police officer Lorenzo oh. that I don't understand what's, joint smoking. What's Lorenzo. funny, I, don't understand I, that. I ask you that question because. It's very, all of us, you know, sitting here have been raised in the generation where like, if you got pulled over with a roach in your, you know, ashtray, yes. yeah. your parents picked you up from jail, right? Like it was yeah. like, even if you smelled, oh, you yeah, could yeah, smell yeah. like it. You didn't and, even have to have the right. roach. Just and smell like it. There you were. Right. And so mm -hmm. it's really funny to me to see like, and I had to have that conversation. I, I am a habitual line stepper. I love to like, that's my thing, right? Like I want to kind of like always step over the line. <laughs> there are people that work with me that don't want, like their job is specifically not to step over the line and probably to cover me stepping over the line. You, right? <laughs> and like, you know, it's, it's, it's amazing how, you know, cannabis has kind of worked into it's, it's legal. The cops mm -hmm. literally told us how much cannabis we could have each attendee come into the show with. And here's, mm -hmm. you know, whatever. Then we go to talk about, you know, what we should be advertising and what they can bring in. And it's like, don't tell them how much you can bring in. It's like, but like, it's a selling point. It's amazing. It's like this thing, dude, you can carry the cops said up to six ounces, you know, now all of a wow. sudden, yeah, it's an obscene amount. And, and it was like, well, just say, you know, as much as you want to or whatever, you know, trying to round the corners. Sometimes those corners need to be jagged. You know what I mean? And like, <laughs> and, and it, it, no other, you know, better example than what it ended up being with that show. You know, obviously those are the things that like ruffle the feathers and get people through the door. So yeah, it's, yeah. uh, it's pretty wild. Yeah. I, I'm still giggling at, at, Lorenzo even in that kind of space because when I asked can we go to 420 I was kind of sitting on pins and needles waiting to see what he was going to say because the, the cop like, reaction is the the cop reaction is the million dollar question right yeah. like I mean so yeah. funniest story I on Friday before the doors open I was standing outside I was feeling good Decided to smoke a joint, I'm standing there smoking a joint, and I'm talking, I find myself talking to four police officers, you know, from the area, and I'm standing outside of this place that's about to be filled with a thousand, and it, I felt like I was the canary in the coal mine, 
You know what I mean? Like, well, if they uh, fucking take him down, like they're gonna they're gonna fuck yeah, this shit it. up. And yeah. in a weird way, like I was kind of up for it because you you know you want to see what that reaction is, and and you know, dude, like that'd I will good, say, good the, the the police in Edison, the the building in Edison, the, the air, all of those guys, like. You know, I, I feel like it's kind of a relief to them to finally be to a point where it's like, hey, don't be a fucking asshole and there is no problems, you know, and that's right, pretty much right. it has nothing to do with drugs or alcohol or what you're doing or how you are, or who you are. Like if you're not if you're if as long as you're not a horrible human being, like we're not fucking with you and you're not fucking with us. Here we go. And that was the that vibe of, you know, kind of yeah. what 420 was. So And everybody was on their best behavior. Yeah. And was, that that they too. Were high. That too. They no, were high. I, you know what? I, and by the way, I don't take that away. The 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 thousands of people, 17,000 people that we had through the mm-hmm. th- through the place in 3 days. They came in, they had a great time. And they rolled out and everybody was happy and everybody was good. It was a, it was a festival kind of feeling that like, I, I had never seen at a trade show. So that shit was, it was dope. It was literally, it was, it if, was literally. if we seem like we can't stop talking about it, it's because we can't. Yeah, no, I, I've been talking about talking it ever about since it. <laughs> I, I've done 47 exoticas and this one 420 blew my fucking mind. Yeah, yeah it, it was, all right. it was crazy. Absolutely crazy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So oh, you, guys know ghosts. you guys know ghost is like yep. socially disconnected, quiet. Wait, you are not about to tell them that story, right? You're not going to tell them. Tell them the story. I am. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so ghost no. is sober. He does not drink. He does not. He has never done drugs and he doesn't smoke cigarettes. So he's like, we're squares. Okay. I partake in more THC and drinks than he has in probably 15 years. So I don't expect him to do anything while we're at the 420 Expo. In fact, I I count on him being my safety partner and making sure I don't fuck up because, you know, I can't be trusted on gummies. So I took a gummy. It was a 40 milligram. And I took the whole thing. And Casey and I were talking about dosing because I definitely fucked up because I was done. But I get back to the hotel the show's over. It's Friday. It's the after party. So I'm, I go downstairs. I'm like, I'm going to the after party. He's bitching and complaining about how he took three 140 milligram gummies and they aren't working. And I'm like, what the fuck? Why would you do that? And he's like, they're fucking bullshit. I don't know how you're, you must have got a good batch or whatever. And I'm like, I got the low dosage. You got the high dosage. How did Wait, 140 gram or milligrams? Is that what he said? Yes, that's oh, what he he's said. He's high as a motherfucker. Like that. Oh wait, so, wait! She didn't get there yet. <laughs> I. He just doesn't know it party. yet. Like he's yeah no he's right. So I'm like I'm safe to go to the after party. I'm gonna leave you in the room to be mad that the gummies didn't work and why you would take them in the first place. I don't know, but I'm too high to argue, so I leave. I go down to the after party. I'm there for 20 minutes. I'm having an out of body experience. I'm I'm talking and laughing and I'm like literally. I looked down on my body from this out of body experience and I'm like, shut up, Gary. No, don't say that. And I just was like, they're like, let's go smoke. And I'm like, I don't even smoke. How did I get out here? Okay, this is dangerous because if you could easily sway me outside and I'm just like, okay, let's go. What car do I get in? Right. So I'm like, I could have easily been kidnapped. So I tell the people, I'm like, thanks. I'm having a great time. They were from the Chatterbait booth, by the way. And I'm like, I'm going back to my room where I can be in a control. And yes, she is. I want to be in a controlled environment and I'm going to go look after, you know, go see what's going on with my partner. So I get upstairs, I come into the room and he is literally propped against the shared because we're at the Sheridan. He is propped against the, the dresser drawers, but naked. And he's like, he looks at me like I caught him doing something. And he's and I'm like, Oh my God. Now remind you, let me remind you I'm high. So I'm like, Oh my God, did the gummy kick in? And he's like, he can't even talk. He is literally speechless and looks like he is fearing for his life. 
He's holding on to the dresser like we're having an earthquake or something. Like, it is absolutely hilarious. So I start laughing because, you know, my. And I'm just cracking up. And he's looking at me like, bitch, I'm about to die. And you're over there. You think this is funny? And so I make my way over to him. And I'm like, all right, let's 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 get you in the bed. And he's like, no, I need to wash my balls. I'm like, what? You want to wash your balls now? You're fucking high. I'm high. You're high. This is n- no, no. But, you know, I'm too high to say no. So what do I do? I help him get to the fucking shower. Now, we're in a handicap room. So the whole bathroom is nothing but tile and shower. Get into the shower. And I'm like, I'm thinking to myself, if we slip and fall, no one's going to know. <laughs> There's No one's going to know. No one's going to care. We're literally just going to bleed to death and die. So you're at the point in your life you're thinking through the, the absolute worst possible thing that could ever happen. To anybody while you're high yeah <laughs> you can't do no nothing, no not so while like, you're high because you're high because <laughs> i got high because so i'm like I got we have high. to get out of this shower and i was like when dun, we get out of the shower dun, dun. we're not we're not doing no more you know anything else in the bathroom so i get him to lay down and he spent the whole night and half of the day and the next day super duper high as a kite could not sleep he was tripping so bad he thought he was in space somewhere like i felt so bad for him he's better than the guy from miami who requested his money back because it got too high so yeah i mean that was my story it's both of us were high together yeah no that was uh oh you know there you go <laughs> yeah, great song. So great show. Congratulations to the 3X events team. You guys are awesome. Um, but we got to tell you about what's coming up next because it's only a few weeks away. Yay! There you go. Edison, New Jersey, October 21st to 23rd. Yeah! All right. And have her own space you can go over there and do interviews with her and dude we got go two boob her. tube spaces on the floor that's two, what i'm talking woo-hoo. about i mean two yeah. boob tube spaces boobs and are a pair seriously and, and yep. it's going to be fashion show Yay. yeah i'm, I'm, I'm excited for excited. it we, Wait, the you largest know what? the I'm biggest give, lineup ever i'm gonna give you a little sneak peek of what you're dealing with here. You ready for this? So this is a, yes. the full-blown exclusive. Roll so it. This is literally wow. the show floor of this show. The entire thing sold out. Like we have probably 10 booths that we'll fill in as we go to the show. But uh-huh. look at the size of that thing. Like So you, figures, so like you can imagine that. when we started, oh man, you can't see my mouse. We were on the back of the Chatterbait booth from yeah. the entrance uh-huh. forward. Yeah. That's it. That was the oh, whole show. Wow. wow. <laughs> and now to see this thing like this is it's, Blown it is crazy. shit is going to be crazy. So it's congratulations, by the way. Oh, thank you. Mm-hmm. It, it's awesome. You know, it really has been awesome to see it grow like this and now to see 420 do it again. It, Dude, it's Little been way. 16 Little years way. since we started a new show. So, you know, think about that. Like, that's, you know, it's a nice. def- it was definitely a proud moment. So we're excited that you guys were there to share it. And super- I want to say thank you. I think you guys, yeah. I, I want to say thank you because <laughs> honestly, being a part of the Exotica show is one thing, but to also be included with the 420 Expo and have the opportunity to have that experience. I got great podcast material. I got a lot of filming and just the experience for myself was phenomenal and a great way to kind of separate from the platinum persona and get to be in a non-adult environment was a life-changing thing for me. So I owe that to Exotica, to you, Jay, to the 3X team. Like, you guys are my family. And I still want to see the Sunday picture. Did your did your Instagram get taken down? Oh, dude, the 420. Just, it's like Exotica all over again. Um, it It is amazing how, um, you know, it just, I think by Saturday afternoon, 
they were like, yep, we've, we've had enough of this. Um, but hold on just a second. <laughs> Let me pull up the, uh, I'll, I'll give them the, the full show of there they are. And there you guys are. Mm-hmm. So let's see. Here we go. There's the full Aww. team. So yeah, we got, I mean, it, it's wild to me. The first time I ever did Exotica, the head of security was my high school buddy. He was, he literally was the captain of our football team in high school. Like I, like that was all, you know, and so now to be able to come together and do this, like, you know, shit's crazy. You know, it, it was, yeah. I got one more thing I want to say before the, 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 we're done here. You can't see it in this photo, but Jay had an array of vans that I have to say I was so <laughs> jelly. Oh my God. His vans this weekend were fire. Oh, After- thank, Jay you. thank you. Jay yeah! shoot game in- that shit was honestly like I do it for every show. Uh, my wife yeah. hates me for it. I have 160 <laughs> pairs of sneakers, um, but I buy a new pair for every day of every trade show I ever do. And you know, if, when we did one or two shows, not a big deal. You know, five, six pairs, you know, whatever. Right. Yeah. When you do five of them, all of a sudden you're like, yep. Okay. So 15 new pairs of show shoes and then all the others, you know, this yeah. one clicked well, in this, this like this whole this, like shoe game clicked in and it was impressive. This, this collection was so amazing. Absolutely amazing. <sighs> Thank you. Thank you. That was the, when, that when we get done, we need them. to talk. What's that? When we get done, we need to talk. Okay. I got an idea. All right, here we go. All right. All right. Thank you guys for watching. We will see you guys next week. Same time, same bat channel. We are back. Um, Although we will be taking some time off to prepare and recover from the Exotica Expo show. So come and see us while you can. See you guys next week.